assalamu alaikum uh, this is dr aisha nazuk uh, with another video for our channel grow hub uh, which is meant to deliver in a knowledge regarding statistics econometrics uh, positive thinking even humor genre and um, some programming and coding uh, experience which i plan to add uh, soon in future so this is a channel with diverse type of notifications and diverse type of uh, videos it it is it's an holistic experience about statistics about econometrics about uh, uh, in tough uh, this this is a dry course so i have a uh, humor playlist as well so it will give you an alternate taste of humor side by side learning statistics and econometrics uh, there is also a playlist about positivity and uh, i plan to add on python coding so today's lecture is about testing stationarity in strata dr aisha nazuk here professor from nas university national university of science and technology pakistan okay so what is stationarity uh before i highly recommend that you, if you haven't uh, gone through the other lectures posted on this channel or the basic statistics so before coming up to uh, understand about stationarity it's highly recommended that you have basic idea of introductory level statistics so do watch the statistics playlist as well so uh, stationary time series is one whose mean and variance are you can say constant over time there's another terminology here auto correlation which i am intentionally right now not including so i can say if a variable whose mean and variance is constant uh, or the variation are not that significant then i call that time series as stationary so if i make a simple time plot i can have a look at the average for example if these are the wheat prices so i can see that the average wheat price in the uh, first part of the diagram is different and for example if i come here in the later part of the diagram and the average is much higher so just by a rough look at this diagram or the plot i can say that this as uh, time series is probably non stationary uh so uh, instead of making this time plot we can also have another plot uh in strata but before that i have to introduce for those new beginners who want to understand how to create a data file in strata or introduce the variable so once you open the uh, strata software you can go to data click on data editor and then data editor edit option so once you do that you will have a column where you can enter the data so what am i saying that if you open strata go to data editor and go to data editor edit option so this is a blank strata sheet where i can enter the data so i can as you can see here on this file uh, display that there are different values of a variable listed here right so i can copy and by the way if you think that you don't have these values so how can you can relate with the video uh, the purpose of the video is to make you understand the concept so you can use any values right so i can uh, copy these values here so this is a variable number 1 in which some values are being stored right okay so then coming back okay so i want to create a time series data so i have also uh, to i have to tell strata that this variable 1 or var1 is a time series uh, data so i have to generate an index or a column that uh, contains the uh, data on time so if for example if i have a monthly time period uh, data and uh, sorry a yearly time uh, period data or time series data and the first year is 1998 so i have to type this data command generate time 1 is equal to let me copy this here and i'll paste in strata okay so this strata command let me enlarge it for you generate time 1 by the way uh, this time 1 is arbitrarily i mean i can type t 
or any uh, name that I want to give to the column in which the time is stored. So suppose if I, instead of time one, I use a short like generate t is equal to 1998 plus. Uh, so this 1998 is whatever your starting year, type it, then this is the fixed part of the command, uh, this plus underscore and minus one. So if I start from here, this gen is a fixed part, this is equal to is another fixed part, and this is another fixed part. Remaining the name T is up to us, then the starting year, we have to check whatever it is we have to type here. So then I press enter. So if I go back into the data sheet now, now I have a column you can see T, and it has the values from 1998 to onwards, whatever the years are there. Okay, so that's how I have generated a time uh, related column. Then I have to uh, tell Stata, although for us it's very clear that of course this uh, time period and this the variable that we have just uh, created is uh, yearly, but to Stata we have to tell. So TS set T comma yearly. Right, TS set, that is we are setting the time uh, series and we are setting it so set and t is the column to which we want to set comma yearly so frequency is yearly that's why i have written like this so now stata knows that this t variable is a yearly data right okay next i go to uh, graphics time series graph and then i click on line plots right uh, the good part about the video is I have the screenshot here as well. So if, even if I'm not going and clicking there in the data, you know what am I talking about. So if you click on graphic, time series graphs, and then line plots. So then you have to tell when, that you have to choose time series plot, and then your variable is VAR1. That is uh, your study variable uh, was VAR1. By the way, you can rename that variable as well, but for the time being, I haven't, and I've used the by default name proposed by Stata. So if I uh, click accept, and then I continue, so I can see uh, this type of a graph here. So uh, let me quickly make here, in, because sometimes uh, users find it quite easy that if a graph is made right in front of their eyes. So I go to graphic time series plot and line plots, and then I click on time, uh, just a minute, sorry. I have to go on graphics, and then I have to go on time series plot, and then we have uh, this cologram, right? So cologram variable VAR1, and I click on OK. OK, so this will take a little bit of a time before I actually see the graph. So this is a, a cologram. So this is an autocorrelation function uh, that we are about to discuss in the uh, next slide. So as I said, uh, that this part, uh, the basic time plot, this is quite easy and it's a line plot. That's why I have skipped and I've made the direct autocorrelation function plot in Stata. So what is an autocorrelation? It is basically correlation between current uh, values and the previous value. So if um, I just made the Stata plot here, the ACF plot. If you see the first spike, this is the correlation between uh, series, that is the current series, and if I take a lag of that series, uh, what does that mean? For example, if I come here, this is the actual series, VAR1. So if I make the lag series, uh, lag means the previous observation. So behind the, or before the first row, there is no previous ob observation. So this is empty. Uh, before 2.1, the previous observation is one. Then, before 2.3, the previous observation is 2.1. So this is the lag one series, right? So uh, the ACF plot, this is the correlation between the current series and the first lag series. Then this is correlation between the current series and the second lag series. 
So that's how we can make an autocorrelation function in Stata. And what is the purpose of autocorrelation uh, function? Uh, by the way, there is a very uh, simple command for autocorrelation is instead of clicking, you can also type AC and then type the variable name. Like if uh, I want to make the autocorrelation function of AC, uh, VAR1, I can simply type AC VAR1. So that will give also the same output that we just did. See the shortcut command and you can make. Okay, so what is the purpose of making ACS? That for a stationary series, uh, you would expect the autocorrelation to decay to zero at higher lag, right? That is, as the lag keep on increasing, uh, the spikes or the autocorrelation, they should die out. I mean, these should fade out in the long run. But if they don't, it means it's a non-stationary series. Now, once again, this is a subjective or a visual approach. We, are, we do have dedicated statistical tests to check for non-stationarity. One such test is the augmented Dickey-Fuller test. So the null hypothesis of the augmented Dickey-Fuller test is that the data is non-stationary or in technical terms, there is a unit proof. And the alternate hypothesis is that the data is stationary. So if I have to apply ADF test, I'll go on stats, time series, test, and then I click on augmented Dickey-Fuller test, right? So if the p-value of the ADF test is less than or equal to 0.05, uh, we reject H0, right? That is, uh, we conclude, rejection of H0 means that we conclude that the data is stationary. As I just so show you that H0 means that the data is non-stationary and if p-value is less than 5%, then we reject it. Okay, apparently it's a very straightforward test and I just told you that these are the uh, menu-driven procedure that you can follow for ADF test. Statistics, time series, test, and then ADF. Okay, now... Uh, Actually, ADF test has an assumption. Actually, what is augmented Dickey-Fuller test? If you go and refer some book of econometrics, uh, which is not necessary, I'm just giving you a theoretical background. ADF test is actually running a sort of a regression. And whenever you run a regression, then you have a residual series or a random error. So an assumption of ADF test is that the residual series is white noise. Now, don't be, uh, I mean, get um, afraid of this technical term. White noise simply means if the residual series is has a mean of zero and a fixed variance, then we call it a white noise. And this term, white noise, has an engineering background. You can explore this term over the internet as well. So, uh, what is the uh, background assumption that whenever we run ADF test, uh, the uh, residual series should be a white noise. And if it is not, then we change the number of lags before we can rely on uh, the findings of the ADF test. So, for example, if I run an ADF test here in Stata, right, I go in statistics and then I go to time series and then I go for test and augmented Dickey-Fuller test. So this is the ADF and I want to choose the variable which in our case was VAR1. So I press on OK. So before I can rely on the findings of this test, I have to test whether the residual series is white nice or not. So I again go on statistic time series and then test, and this time I click on portmanteau white noise test. So I click here, and I click on variable VAR1, and I press OK. So the p-value of portmanteau test is 0, that is we reject H0, and what is H0? H0 is that the residual series is white noise. So that means there is a problem. We cannot directly rely on the findings of the ADF test. Now, what op options do we have? Either we should 
uh, try to make this residual series void noise or we switch to another type of test which is assumption free and it is a non parametric test which i will be discussing shortly now coming back to the adf test as i said that uh, the series is not void noise here so what to do if i go to time series again and test and portmanteau test again and uh, this time i click on the number of autocorrelations equal to 2 and then i press okay once again nothing is changed so what does that mean it means that we need to improvise a methodology of deciding how many lags to include when we run the adf test okay so uh, as i said that there are certain assumption of the adf uh, unit root test so we have the uh, other tests that are uh, assumption free or the non parametric test if you don't have an idea of non parametric testing it's advised that you go and study what are non parametric test these are assumption free but uh, their power or their reliability is a little bit lesser than the parametric version like the adf test okay so the null hypothesis of a philip perron test is uh, the null hypothesis is there is a unit root for the series and what does that mean that the series is non stationary whereas the alternate is that the series is stationary so if we have to uh, run uh, the philip perron test i can go in stata and once again i can click statistic time series test and i can use philip perron test and use the variable var1 and press okay so you can see that the null hypothesis okay so these are the this is the output of the philip perron test and you can see that the p value is uh, not less than or equal to 0.05 so we accept h not or we fail to reject h not so so that means that we are saying that the series is non stationary okay so in generally in economics or in specific type of time series data set um you can, you can have non stationary series so what to do if you have a non stationary series one of the remedy is that you do the differencing uh, for example i want to uh, difference the variable so what i have to type for example if i copy this command here and run in stata for you okay so suppose i want to uh, generate a variable this is my choice whatever i want to name it generate a variable for example dir and that variable is variable 1 minus variable 1 underscore n minus 1 so what does that do it will take the difference of the current observation with the previous observation so this is how the first difference series will be generated if you go to the stata you can see 2.1 minus 1 is 1.1 so this is the first difference series now you can check whether the first difference series is stationary or not so you can apply the philip perron test once again on the different series which is dir and press okay so this time the p value is 0 that is we reject h not and uh, you can see that rejection of h not means we are accepting the alternate which is we are saying that the series is stationary so you see that the by making the first difference we have made the series stationary by the way if first differencing does not make your series stationary you can do the try the second differencing uh, which is by generating another variable this again diff2 second is up to you whatever you want to name that column for example diff2 and this is the fixed part of the command var1 minus var1 underscore and minus 2 so whatever your variable because our variable was var1 for example if your variable is gdp you can type gdp minus gdp underscore and minus 2 so that's how second differencing can be done so but keep in mind that if your series is stationary on sec first difference there is no more need for uh, more differencing 
So this was all about testing stationarity in Stata. I hope that you have learned from this video and uh, give your feedback in the comment section and provide us areas of further improvement. Thank you.